if you are a developer working with Azure Function Apps, you know how tricky it can be to manage application settings during development and testing, especially when switching between local and cloud environments. As developers, we often encounter a range of challenges when dealing with application settings. Whether it's juggling between local and cloud environments, managing sensitive data, or ensuring that our application behaves consistently across all environments. This task can be daunting and honestly a bit frustrating. Managing these settings effectively is very crucial for several reasons. Firstly, it's about security. Mishandling sensitive information like database connection strings or API keys can lead to serious vulnerabilities. Secondly, it's all about efficiency. Streamlining the configuration process saves us valuable time and reduces the risk of errors. And lastly, it's about making our lives easier. No one wants to spend hours debugging a configuration issue that could have been avoided with better management practices. In this video, we will look through a step-by-step -step process on how to manage your app settings efficiently. We will start by using a secret from local settings JSON file. Then we move it to the user secrets for local development. And finally, we will shift it to Azure Key Vault for cloud deployment. We will also look into how our Azure Function App can adapt each level of configuration, making your development process smoother and more secure. Hi, this is Shri. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, I do blogging and make YouTube videos on .NET and Azure. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and help me grow this channel. Let's start now. First, let's create an Azure function, which is of type HTTP trigger. Azure function settings, click next. We want the function to be HTTP trigger. Click on create. Here it is our Azure function. Let's go to local settings.json file and add a sample setting. Simply say setting one and give some value one. Now to use this setting in our code, the first thing we have to do is we have to configure our function app to use these application settings. Let's configure that. Go to the program.cs and here we're going to simply set this using this piece of code. So this piece of code, what this will do is this will load our local settings JSON file or settings.json file into the code. So once it is loaded into the code, they will be in I configuration and you can start using them. So to use the setting now, if you go to the functions, you can simply use I configuration, configuration, you can declare a private read only variable here. This would again, you just assign this in constructor. So that is all done. Now here, when you throw the results, I'm simply, just simply say local settings value is this dot iPhone configuration. So our settings value, our settings key, which is setting one, just simply do the setting one and let's run the code. The function app is up and running. Simply let's do a get request. Click on this link and it will do a get request. And if you look at the get request, local setting value, value one, we are able to read setting one value from application settings. Let's close this and just close this one and stop it. Now, if you see here, here we are dealing with just one application settings, but in the real world projects, we usually deal with more than one application settings and we might need hierarchical complex application settings. To deal with that, the preferred and best easy approach is to use the options pattern. If you go here in the Microsoft documentation, you can find all the information in terms of how do we implement this options pattern in our Azure functions. Let's implement options pattern here and let's see how we can more easily organize the settings to access the same settings one value. For that, first, let's create a folder here just to make it more organized. I'm going to name it as options. Under options, I just want to create one more class and I want to name it as application options. And 
let's create a one more class and let's name this one as service option so the idea here is the service option pulls all the settings related to a specific service a specific category you can treat it as a category and you could have multiple category of settings for each category you can create your own class and categorize your settings into that specific class and we can group all these categories under application options that's the idea so this one would be the public here simply let's create a setting and we'll name it as public string same setting one and i want to add one more setting here as well string i want to call it as a secret one now we will group this one under application simply you go like public since this is a required attribute public string this is not string this is a type of service options just want to name it as a service get and set so this is all done now we have to bind these classes to our local settings properly that way it can automatically read the local settings value or application setting value into this object structure so let's do that let's bind our application settings to this object for that we need a nuget package simply to do that binding this is very very handy one which simplifies the process boxed.asp.net code very very handy package let's get that in so this package lets us to bind the settings very easily now with that we will go here services dot configure and validate singleton in our case we want to bind service options now load the service option context if there isn't context here let's take the context as well context comma this should give us the context take this off and context dot configuration dot get section of simply we want to get the section of service here for that you simply say name of application options dot service so what we are saying here is we want to from the configuration look for services and bind that into the service options and load this object as a dependency injection every time when we refer this one in the constructor of any of the class which we're going to do it shortly right so this one sentence using the box.asp.net core package simply simplifies the way of binding our local settings to a specific object if we go to our local settings since it is hierarchical because we have the service options service and within the service we have settings and the name if you look at here the name is service right and if you go to the program we are getting the section service and the settings within the service is setting one secret one that is why here we just have to do service colon that should do and if i go here if i go to the function we can simply directly get the service option instead of high configuration you simply take this off and you can go service options service options so instead of this way you can simply access as if setting one we haven't given any value to the secret one though it is just secret settings one but let's add the secret one as well otherwise it would throw the exception since we add the required property there just to be sure what is the name of this secret one secret one and i just want to do it as a secret one secret if you go to the code it simply say this dot service option start secret one run this all running just the link just to get operation which brings up this and value one and secret one we are simply able to get the values using the service option pattern this is more easy organized i mean with a single setting you can directly do i configuration but with the bigger projects bigger setting most importantly with complex and hierarchical structure it's better way of managing the setting now if you look at the secret one here we don't want the secret one value to be in the application settings directly exposed when we deploy this in the cloud we want this secret value to be read from azure key vault but from the local you don't need to connect to the azure key vault you can manage your local secrets directly 
under the user secrets. Let's see how we can do that in the development and make it very seamless when you deploy this one to the cloud. The same setting can be taken directly from the keyword without any code changes. Now let's manage this via user secrets. For that, you just right click, manage user secrets. Yes, I want to add the required packages to be able to use the user secret. There you go. Then here, what we have to maintain is we simply do this. This one value. So now we have the secret value here and in the user settings. So what I want to do is I want to do the user secrets one to maybe just I'll say this is the um, user secret value and save it. And just let's run this and see we have, you know, same values in two places. One is at local settings, which is nothing but application settings when you deploy this to the cloud. And other one is user secret. The local is user secrets. But when you deploy it to the cloud, cloud version would be the keyword. And if you simply click on this get operation, it would get the secret one, which is from the application setting. Now, what we want to do is we want to simply override this one take away this one and read the value from user seek to do that what we can do is now if you see here we have configured the application to load the settings always from the application setting now all we can do is simply if it is development load the settings from users right if it is a development just load the settings from user settings using this piece of code now, if I cancel this and rerun again, it should load the settings from user secrets. Let's check that. Run this user secret value. If you see, right? So this is what we have set in the user secret value. What does that mean is it kind of ignored this one and it took the user secret value. Now, this is well and good for the local, right? But when you deploy it, we don't want this one to be here, right? We want that one to be in the Azure key vault. Main the local version user secrets well and good but the cloud version is key vault right so let's configure the key vault as well here so we say the initial preference is local settings if it is development use user settings in the similar fashion if it is not development get it from key vault let's add that piece of code so this is the piece of code to say okay if it is not development use the key vault um simply we just need an um uh, package to install Azure Identity Package, find and install the latest version that should do the trick. And uh, probably this one would need a package. Let's install that package as well. We just need this guy here to be able to properly configure the key vault in our code. That is done. Let's go here and see if he's able to recognize now. Yep, looks good. Control S, Control Shift, build. Everything looks good. So, but we did not have the key vault URL. So even this one, right, we can go with the options pattern and create appropriate class and property there. But for now, I'm just using the local settings directly. We set the key vault URL here. I have already created a Infacto key vault resource in my Azure portal. Let's go to the overview and grab the key vault URL from here. Just copy this and go to our code. Is the key vault URL here? And the settings that we want to read from the key vault is secret one. And let's go to our key vault and try to create the secret. This is the name. And here it doesn't allow colon. Instead, just provide dash dash for hierarchical values and the content type this secret plot just control x and paste this here and create the secret the secret has been created so we have the server secret one created here the default credentials as in the managed identity my microsoft account here is already connected and it will use this microsoft account to connect to the azure key vault that is all set up and we have also placed key vault url in application settings and we have created this secret. we have secret manage user secrets and we have the same secret in the key vault if we go here so the priority here is local settings then if it is development get it from the user secrets if it is cloud not development then get it from the key one now let's see if this works let's run the function app since it is local it, it is getting the value from managed secrets 
let's close this close this for demo purpose let's deploy this one into our uh, function app okay i have deployed this code into my one of the function app this is the function app i have deployed the code here and i have enabled the managed identity for this function app i have assigned our function app managed identity the necessary permissions needed on azure key vault to be able to read the secret that is all done everything is set up now if i go to the function app and simply just go here or just go to the functions just click here click the function one and um, you can simply just get the url and hit it in the browser because it's anonymous function there's no nothing is there local setting value and i don't know what did we put there let's go and check i'll show secret value this is from the cloud because i'm just missing some settings in my function app i'll have to just create those settings in my function app if i go to my function app configuration new application setting let's create service one setting value one and we also need most importantly key vault url which is this okay hit save which would restart the function app it will take a probably a minute or so okay that is all done it is refreshed now simply if i hit ctrl f5 it's loading there you go value one and this secret is from cloud if you see our code secret one and this value is from cloud so this is how we manage the settings right local settings they all go here and any secrets for the local development we maintain those secrets under user secrets this is the next level this is how we configure if it is development get the secrets from the local secrets user secrets if it if it is not development you can configure to get the secrets from the key vault using the necessary permissions and all that and if i run the local just to be sure it would get the secrets from user secrets it is yep user secret value which is from our user secrets manage user secrets user secret value that is it for this video i hope you like the content if you like the content please subscribe like and share it i will catch you in the next video until then this is shri signing off thank you